Welcome to Drawfee, where we take dumb ideas and make even dumber drawings. I'm Nathan. I'm Jacob. I'm Karina. I'm Julia. Guys, it's blood time. That classic quote from Bloodborne, <laughs> it's blood time. <laughs> That's what happens when you go super in Bloodborne, right? He just smashes some vials into his legs and goes, it's blood time. It's blood, it's time. blood time. It's kind of like a Sonic the Hedgehog voice. Yeah. I don't know if we have anyone in specific to everyone. thank for this one. So we're gonna thank everyone for just liking that last video we did with the Bloodborne and we're gonna do some more because there's some more bosses in that game. It oh, there's some more. It wasn't just three bosses. No, there's <laughs> way more than that. Yeah. And we've got Karina here to join us this time as well. I, I don't can't know wait to see her what takes. I'm doing. <laughs> Yay. Welcome to the Drawfee motto. Yeah. <laughs> None of us do. I'm ready to get started. Jacob, you're gonna give me the name of Bloodborne boss. You're I... gonna describe it. And I'm going to try and draw it, my I best. I'm going to do that. That's correct. Yeah. Um, I've actually got some theming today. Um, today we're focused entirely on great ones, which Ooh. in the uh, <laughs> Bloodborne world are like the eldritch cosmic beings that are, you know, kind of unknowable. I have so a feeling. Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. He's a great one. I have a feeling <laughs> this episode is going to be a great one. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a great one. <laughs> he's a great one. He's called the great one. That's his nickname. It was a hockey joke. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who is both a fan of the Bloodborne <laughs> game series and also uh, hockey, it's not a series. It's just part of the the Dark Souls. Let's let's play. Let's go. Can, can we, we go? can we do it? Can we go, please? Can we please? Nathan. <laughs> yes. Your Bloodborne boss is called, and I'll probably pronounce this wrong because I don't know the right way to pronounce. Oh it. Oh my god, dude! Yours is called Ebriatas, daughter of the cosmos. It's not oh. Wayne Gretzky at all. It's not Wayne Gretzky. Maybe it's Wayne Gretzky's daughter. Ebriatas, <laughs> daughter of the cosmos. Yeah. Okay. So... And I'm going to give you some description to start out with. Yeah. Here. Give me give me something to start with. So Ebriatas is one of the eldritch great ones. Uh-huh. Uh, Ebriatas is a monstrous creature that resembles a slug with squid-like tentacles emerging from her back. <laughs> so we can start great. there. Great. Resembles a, resembles a slug. With squid-like tentacles emerging from her back? Yes, with squid-like tentacles emerging from her back. Okay. Does I'll, she have like a, a mouth? I'll give you some more here. Okay. Uh, her face appears split in half and is covered in strange growths that resemble fungus that surround her vulnerable head. Her, so her imagine, face, her face is split in half. Imagine a split face, uh huh, surrounded in fungus. I know you've never seen a split in half face on this show. Okay, and, and no, inside I'll, I'll the just, split face okay. is a vulnerable head. But it's a sl but it's a slug. But it's a sl it resembles a slug. But inside the face, there's another head. Yeah, a vulnerable one. <laughs> <laughs> So there's like, you know, an exterior face uh -huh, that's for the, defensive that, purposes. That's the slug face. Okay, and we're going to get the <laughs> inside. There's a very vulnerable. <laughs> there's a very vulnerable one. Okay, so let's get the slug face going, and then I'll pull a Julia. Yeah, you'll split it open and reveal okay, the vulnerable face <laughs> that resides inside. Here we go. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> Not split enough for my taste, but that's okay. Okay. You do you. And then a real vulnerable face in here, huh? Yeah, a vulnerable face in there. Just like, or it's a vulnerable head, you said. It's a vulnerable head, yes. Okay, so that's just sort of, it's just sort of peeking out. Does it have big sad eyes? Yeah, it's vulnerable. So it's like emotionally vulnerable. She's vulnerable. I've covered myself in squid bits <laughs> so that if you puncture it, it gets to the, the, the slug first. And then fungus growths? Is yeah. this another mama mold? The, uh, the it's it's covered well, in a strange growths that resemble fungus. Okay. So it resembles a slug <laughs> and resembles fungus. I'm gonna give you a little bit of lore while you're drawing. Okay. Ebriatas was uh, the object of the healing church's worship. Does that help you at all? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Abriatas communes only with the highest members of the church, guiding them in the ways of blood ministration. She is one of the great ones who was left behind in the old labyrinth, eventually discovered by the healing church. The healing church later founded the choir to protect and study her. She is the only great one that wants to coexist with humans. Aww. You do murder her, though. Oh, please. But you don't... I just want someone to talk to. <laughs> but you don't have to murder her. Aww. But you do. You Well, you can. She's one of the few bosses in the game that won't attack you until you've attacked her first. What if you just pour a bunch of salt on her? Whoa. She's a big slug with tentacles? Nathan, okay. she resembles a slug. Oh, okay. So you have to pour something that resembles yes, salt. Yes, it's got to resemble salt. 
uh, a, a cosmic salt equivalent. Oh, right. yeah. you know what, Nathan? There's actually something I forgot to tell you. Very important. Okay. Um, she possesses a set of skeletal wings that grants her limited flight. <laughs> okay, but the okay, but they can't be on her back because obviously that's where the <laughs> tentacles are. So we got just some skeletal wings on the front. You can pick, you know, wherever you want them to go. I'm as putting them on the there. front. Um, just some limited flight. Limited right? flight. Yeah. So just a little. The very limited flight on this one. They're just little bony guys. They're just little bony guys. They're just little bony guys coming in. I've got a lot to work with here, I feel like. There's a lot. And what I like about the great ones is I can be more physically descriptive and you still aren't going to get anywhere close. <laughs> I think I'm pretty close. <laughs> uh, there, there's a lot here that's similar, but when you see it, you'll realize that you never stood a chance. That's fine. It, it is that's, fine, Nathan. That's, I guess, what we're doing here on this episode. <laughs> We're just giving each other impossible tasks. Hey, Nathan. What? Do you want to hear facts about Wayne Gretzky? <laughs> Do you have facts? I have facts about Wayne Gretzky. Uh, how many um, tentacles did he have? He didn't have any, but he you was- You miss he... 100% of the tentacles you don't take. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Canadian, <laughs> the Canadian Bloodborne Great One. Uh huh. Uh, do you actually have facts? I do have facts about Wayne Gretzky. Give me, give me one Gretzky fact. If I were allowed only one fact about Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, what's the one fact <laughs> what's the about one thing? Yeah. Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> he has six All Star records. Is that is that? That's kind of like though? tentacles. Kinda... Yeah. He, it, it, if <laughs> are they on his back? If, on his back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where he keeps them. <laughs> uh. Boy, look at this gross, wet, gross, wet thing that I've drawn. I can keep talking about Wayne Gretzky if you want me to. I don't. I don't no. think. <laughs> I don't think at any point did did I. <laughs> you clearly asked for more facts about. You started this episode and you said, "Julia, said, please Ju give me more facts about Wayne, the Great One, Gretzky." Um, I'm done. I don't want to draw this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You've absolutely done a fantastic job. Let's look her up. Mm, she's got sort of a, a big old hole. A big old noggin that is split. Mm -hmm. uh, lot, so you see the fungus there. Where's the face? It's inside. It's kind of more just like a red lumpy head. Oh, there are some eyes there. Oh, look at that. It's you like, see the eyes? <laughs> they resemble noodles. You remember, it's like she's got macaroni and cheese face a yeah, little bit. Yeah, should have said that they resembled macaroni and cheese. She Dang. kind of looks like an oyster. Yeah, she does have some like sea vibes, like yeah. deep sea vibes going on. Oh, she's fun. Nathan, you did great. I'm having fun. Those, I, I love the your... skel The skeletal wings are much bigger than the ones I drew, but uh, yeah. that, that's fine. Uh, Karina, are you ready to hop in this thing? Yeah, sure. Karina, your boss is... Rom the vacuous spider. Excuse me? <laughs> Rom the vacuous spider. That's like someone had a vague memory of Harry <laughs> Potter and was like, there's a character named Rom and there was also like a big spider. <laughs> They're fucking up Ron Weasley's name. Rom and Hermione. <laughs> um, here's a description for you. Yes, please. Despite her title, Rom resembles a gigantic pill bug rather than an arachnid. Aww. She has a silver fish-like tail and a bulbous body from which vegetation appears to be growing. Appears to be uh. growing. Possibly cold blood flowers. Her face resembles a chunk of pumice or pumice? Pumice. Pumice. Pumice, the okay. rock that floats. A chunk of pumice, the rock that floats. Perfect. And is covered in eyes. Um, That's a lot. And okay. once again, Ram is initially non-hostile until provoked, uh, which mm. I forgot. So there are two bosses. Two female great ones. They're just trying to live their lives. That are just trying to do their thing until you show up and, and hit them with your big sharp saw. Is there like a section of the game where you're going around just fighting the great ones or do they pepper the great ones in throughout? You get some sort of here and there. Okay. Uh, depending on how you do things. So where where in the game are, are we coming up against Rom? So, okay, I'll, I'll give you some lore, and I think this will make things very clear. Rom the Vacuous Spider controls the barrier that prevents normal Yarnamites, which are the people of the city Yarnum, from seeing the true horrors around them. Rom was once a scholar of Bergenworth, whom at some point went through metamorphosis into a Ken Great One, courtesy of Kaz, which Ken? is an actual Great, great One. one? Uh, K I N, like kin. Oh, uh, like I a was cousin Ken, of the Great like Ones. Like Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> He just had He's a metamorphosis where he became a beautiful plastic man. Uh, there's a note that says the spider uh, the spider hides all manner of rituals, certain to reveal nothing, for true enlightenment need not be shared. God, look at his little legs. 
Aww. And down in the lake, there's a sort of big uh, white abyss, and Rom is in there just chilling. Just hanging out. Uh, but once you kill Rom, uh, that's when kind of all hell breaks loose in the game. So why would you kill him? You, suddenly you can see all the horrors that truly surround you that you were unaware of <laughs> up until that point. So uh, why would you kill Rom? Because uh, you're trying to get to the bottom of shit, Julia, and putting a Band-Aid on it isn't going to fix what's going on in Yarnum. <laughs> He's just trying his best. So if you if you kill Rom with your big saw, you hack it all up. Uh-huh. Is that a Rom hack? <laughs> <laughs> <Nathan>. <laughs> Yes, Nathan, it's a ROM hack. Thank you. Uh, I have one more thing, Karina, to add to this. Uh oh. Is um, it wings? It's not it wings. wings. Oh. It's, it's, it's not skeletal, skeletal wings. wings. <laughs> ROM is accompanied by creatures known as the children of ROM. Aww. Little babies. They resemble actual spiders, oh. but with the same shaped head and appear to have blades for legs. Yes. <laughs> they appear to have blades for legs. <laughs> I like how unsure every description yeah, is. It's like they're trying their best, but they don't want to state anything too firmly just in case they're wrong. Karina, I do like the this little garden we've got growing on Rom's back. Yeah, this is very cute. Throw in some succulents. Oh, there's such a variety. <laughs> yeah. This is I just, really like that. I don't know what plants are. This is just a fun desk. Um, yeah, someone... it's like a <laughs> bamboo <laughs> desk ornament. This is like a new ergonomic desk. It's pill bug shaped and uh, <laughs> it's covered in plants. I thought it's... it was really cool of Rom to like go green and get like, you know, sort of a green roof situation going. Yeah. Support the environment. This is great. You, you follow Rom around. It's just like a breath of fresh air walking around <laughs> with yeah. you. How big is Rom? Rom is uh, bigger than a person. Like you're you're probably about the size of Rom's um, head. Pumice head. Yeah, the size of okay, Rom's let's pumice get, head. Let's get a kitty in here. Okay. Get, yeah, get awesome. it. Let's get a child of Rom. One of them. One of them blade spiders. Yeah, one of, the, one of Rom's many blade spiders. This it these these heads they do sort of resemble the way you've drawn them, uh, just a, a rock with a bunch of googly eyes, sort of <laughs> pasted. Yeah, that's and what, I, that's what it's, it's a kids to be craft like, project. Right? I do like that. <laughs> <laughs> what do spider legs look like? Blades, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Just, just some knifeies. Oh, yeah. yeah, there we go. And Rob's just like, kids, play cutting, nice. Rob's <laughs> cutting bread. Don't stab your brother. Yeah, I was going to say, one of the spiders comes out, and he's like, Dad, I don't want to attack people. I want to be a chef. <laughs> look at my legs. And he's just got, like, It'd butcher's knives and serrated blades. <laughs> I'm really good in the kitchen, Dad. Rom is mom, Julia. Rom, Rom is mom. I mean, you know, she can be. Rom can be what Rom wants to be. What Rom wants to be is a spider at the bottom of the lake that protects everyone from unknown horrors. Yeah. But we can't let her do that, apparently. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that's great. Adorable. Did I do she, it? Yeah. Let's yes. look up the uh, look the actual up. one. You're very close. Oh, oh. Yeah. nailed it. Wow, look at that mouth. Oh, you didn't tell me she had a mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she got a little mouth. Um, but yeah, a big sort of long body with these glowing plants on it. Yours is definitely a cuter version of this. <laughs> you did get really close. What about the spider children? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I like Karina's better, I think. Th th those just look like regular old spider legs. <laughs> well, when they're fighting Where are you, the blades? they definitely do blade you with those things. Wow. They um, appear to be blades. Yeah, they mm. appear to be blades. Is Rom oh, already that's right. dead in that picture? No, Rom is flipped on onto her back. She's Aww. like doing a... A the move. Plants. She's got moves she does that involve flipping over and uh, summoning like meteors to fall on you. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> it's cool All that right. she can do that. It is cool that she can do that, yeah. <laughs> Let me in. Your boss is the final boss of the DLC content mm -hmm. in the game. Uh, he's called the Orphan of Kaz. Okay. The orphan is a tall, skeletal humanoid. Its mouth is permanently fixed in a rictus grin, and it constantly screams throughout the fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rictus grin. Sort of like a okay. like a rigor mortis. Yeah. Oh, oh like it's, okay. Like it's thank yeah. you. It's set in. It's like, set okay. in. <laughs> Looks like, uh, Jacob like the flesh is like peeled back from the mouth, and there's this big. Okay, grin. I got Jacob it. Jacob just made like a Gary's mod face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Gary's mod face. <laughs> a thin membrane is draped across its back like a cape. Uh, this transforms into a pair of wings when the orphan enters its second form. Okay. The orphan wields its placenta in combat, akin to a club or flail, and it can tear pieces <laughs> off to use as an explosive projectile. After it transforms, the placenta <laughs> mutates into a weapon resembling a gigantic axe or glaive. You got all that? Okay. You got all that? Yeah. 
Skeletal human, Noid, yeah. uh, Rictus Grin, constantly screaming, uh, membrane cape, wields its placenta in combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Easy. I've got to say, just, just a little peek behind the curtain, we record these episodes typically in the afternoon. It's like around uh, it's around 2. So I just found out that uh, 2 p.m., still too early in the day to hear the word placenta. <laughs> Just... We're trying to figure out when the right time yeah, is. Yeah, it's too it's too early. It's you do too... like hourly checks? Yeah. Well, yeah. Just, just, just pop into my office later today. Uh, Julia, something else just to tell you as like a, yeah. a hint here. Please do. Remember also that it is a skeletal humanoid. It so... doesn't look like Wayne Gretzky. Okay. <laughs> as, as much as you might hope. Um, the uh, Bloodborne community, when referring to the Orphan of Causes um, placenta weapon, mm-hmm. affectionately refer to it as his shrimp hammer because it does kind of look like a big shrimp that he hits you with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm replaying Bloodborne right now, and you lose like all of the skill you built over the first playthrough if you wait too long. Uh-huh. So I had to go through like all those phases again of being like, this game's impossible. How did I ever play this game? It's impossible. Towards eventually, you like find a sort of peace with it. Yeah, and you're like you accept your death uh, occasionally. You're just like, hmm, guess yeah. that's there's like a there's like a, gonna happen to a me? rhythm to it. Yeah, you right? find like a, you have to find your rhythm. You got to find your rhythm, and then once you do, feels super good to play. Uh, but before that, feels super bad to play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this, buddy. Julia, I think you're drawing papyrus from Undertale. This is like a real. This is one of them like realistic. Yeah. yeah make sure to make sure to get the grin. He's grinning, make right? Sure to... Rick grin... just grin. He's Rick just grinning, but also screaming. Yeah, so also screaming. We constantly want... screaming. We leave a little gap for the scream to come out. Yeah, leave... you have to leave a scream gap. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Oh, this this is my scream gap. It's so I can constantly scream. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. Scary, scary. Yeah, this is so fun. This is, I'm pretty sure I've seen this Halloween decoration. Yeah, this is a happy Halloween skeleton. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, now are you going to make his uh, scream? Yeah, don't worry about it. Whoa! (laughs) You can let a big scream out through there. Yeah. Okay, and now we've oh, got is this his, his membrane. He does. He well, I imagine you said skeletal, so I was picturing that he was just very gaunt, and yeah, then you yeah. kept saying skeletal at me, so I made him a straight up skeleton. But now I'm going back a bit. I okay. think I think that you're going to land in the right spot here, which is like there there is flesh there. Okay, <laughs> but he is so gaunt <laughs> that he looks more like a skeleton than a person. Right, like okay. a flesh covered skeleton. Okay, in there, this still looks like a Halloween decoration. <laughs> Like you'd walk by it and the mouth would drop open and it yeah. would scream at you. Enter at your own risk. Nah, I'm gonna take Undertale. away the eyes. It is Undertale. It's a it's a it's a hard line to uh <laughs> to go between. Uh, yeah. Julia, would you like some lore? Yeah, I would. To to kind of get you in the mood. Yeah, please. Mentioned as the poor wizened child of the being cause. It can be theorized that the desecration of cause by the hunters led to the death of this infant great one, causing it to fade into a plane similar to limbo. In retaliation for that saddening fate, the devoted mother cause laid the curse of blood upon the old hunters responsible for their earthly deaths and upon those who followed in their bloodlusting footsteps. Drunk with blood, the later hunters would join the old hunters in the limbo of the orphan of cause, referred to as the hunter's nightmare. So when you fight this thing, you're not in the real world as you often are not. In the game. Right. You've gone to a place where blood drunk hurt hunters are cursed to go. Ugh, okay. Don't you hate it when a hunter just can't hold their blood and they just get drunk? No, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> it's like just get a little blood tipsy and then like, you know, don't don't make a scene. Don't yeah. embarrass yourself. You're embarrassing yourself in front of everyone. Uh one more bit of trivia, Julia. Good to know that it sobs as it stands next to the corpse of Kaz and views the moon, possibly to reveal just what suffering was inflicted by the old hunters that caused the curse of blood. Hmm. So, how, so you how got is screaming, Kaz, you got sobbing. How is Kaz spelled? <laughs> K-O-S. Okay, and that's his, that's his mommy? Yes, that's his mommy. And she's already dead. She's dead. Do you kill her or she was already dead? She was killed by these old hunters from long ago. That's what got everyone all cursed up. Oh, dang. So if they just had left her alone, everything would have been fine? Yeah, but also unclear what would have happened if, uh, you know, she'd been left alone. And then her screaming son. Yeah, and then her just <laughs> awful screaming son. Her awful <laughs> screaming son will plague you for the rest of time. Mom! <laughs> so, Mom, I wanted 
Mom, where are the hot pockets? <laughs> What were the uh, what were the tips about the body? What was the what was the description there? He has a, a he uh, has he's got a placenta. <laughs> I that's his weapon. Placenta is Come literally on. the only thing I remember. Um, he's got a membrane draped across his back like a cape. Yeah, we got that coming yeah, in. Yeah, that's coming in. That turns into wings when he uh, goes second form because yes. he's also an anime. He's character. got multiple forms. <laughs> he has a a t- he's a tall skeletal humanoid. Humanoid. So tall. Humanoid, you know. Okay. Um, I don't feel like drawing bones. For so you're putting cage. a shirt on him. Yeah. I'm giving him like a sensible button-up shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm giving him a little button-up shirt. You found him on the day of his big interview. <laughs> I have to be a persona blow. Mom. Mom, where's my button-up? How do I iron? No, the other one. <laughs> the hunter's gonna be here any minute. <laughs> <laughs> the job is with, yeah, the interview is with a hunter. Who's coming to kill him. Yeah. Um, I just think I would make a great candidate for a boss fight, you know. I got this shrimp hammer. It's actually my placenta. <laughs> I do have a... <laughs> oh, boy. And he doesn't have his own name. He's he's just the orphan of Kaz. Yes, because his mother was killed. Before she could give Before him a he good, was born. a good name. Oh, there was a yeah. a partial reason for why they probably killed his mother was because they were looking for the umbilical cords of great ones. No, because when con- when consumed, they can give humans the properties of great ones and uh, can lead to some sort of ascension, which well, is what everyone in this game is trying to do. Everyone's trying to ascend. Everyone wants to like ascend beyond <laughs> humanity to the realm of the Great Ones, so they killed Kaz to get at her umbilical cord. Mm-hmm. Did it and, work? Um, well, they did get it, but also they got super cursed. Kind of yeah. canceled out. Give it out. a take, yeah. So you ascend, you get cursed, same diff. I mean, it's implied that Rom, the spider, was, ascended was in some a, way. Was used, a to, person, used to be a person. Was just a scholar. Yeah, but just did, a big nerd did ascend in <laughs> some then, way to become a giant pill bug. It was like, <laughs> what if? <laughs> I'm just, I'm rough. I don't feel like drawing some skeletal hands. So Is he's that, wearing he's got some some gloves. He's also he's, wearing some gloves. Is that the placenta there that uh uh-huh. that he's got? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see where the legs are gonna go. Um, you I'm and me both in this scared. position. You've put the the hands on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're doing we're doing sort of a lunge. Does he also have pants <laughs> and boots? Do you want just some pelv? Do you no, want it? No. Do you I mean, want you, to see some pelv? I was just asking you. Like I want to you know get a, a know. sense does, for where you're headed with this. Does he? Do, is he wearing pants? 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 Does he wear pants in, in the, the game? game? No, he doesn't wear pants in the game. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> where would he get pants? Where does he get anything? He wears some tidy whities He's wielding his own placenta as a club. <laughs> he doesn't have anything. Maybe okay. they're also pants. He has a shirt. Yeah. Well, you've you... given him a shirt. <laughs> no, does you he clearly shirt? told me he has a shirt. <laughs> For his job interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. I, I, I spent so much time on my skin cloak, I completely <laughs> forgot to... To wear pants. Oh, silly me. I swear, I'd forget my head if it wasn't attached to me. <laughs> and it... constantly <laughs> scream. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, we got... We got a leg oh, bone. That's a bone. We got that. Can we get some attack names? These are the first phase attacks. Okay, great. We got slash, uh-huh. uh, swings placenta for heavy damage. Right. We got plunge, uh, jumps and slams placenta <laughs> into the ground. Small AOE. We have blood orb, where you you know where you throw a single volleyball sized projectile of blood. Um, and then there's a leaping slam. <laughs> So you got to watch out for that one with with the yeah. placenta again. I assume um, with the placenta. Yes. I think unless otherwise noted, all attacks are with <laughs> are yeah. with placenta. Um, we've also got the second phase attacks like blood scatter shot. Okay, blood yeah. scatter um, shot. And, that sounds uh, like a Nerf gun. Blood explosion. <laughs> are the blood of the of the great ones poisonous? Actually, the reverse. Uh, the blood of the great ones heals pretty much any ailment. And that's why when it was found by humanity initially, they started a uh, church. The Church of the Healing. The Church of the Healing Blood. Yeah. And they were healing everyone in Yarnum of all of their ailments. So people started flocking to Yarnum to be healed uh, with the, the healing blood. But the problem is the blood is very addictive. 
and, and people needed more and more of it. And then it has the, the nasty side effect of eventually transforming you into a horrible beast. But they didn't know that at the time. And <laughs> by the time they did the know way. it, it was too late because everyone needed it to keep on, keep on keeping on. You've got the horrible beasts from, from the blood, and those are the ones you can see already, but then there's also some like crazy stuff happening that you can't see. Because... Yeah, once you kind of learn where the blood's been coming from, you start to get into finding you know, the sources of this blood, uh, finding these great ones. And uh, taking them down too. Is so that wait, a blood orb in his hand? No, uh, he's just holding. He's just holding a bit of it. He's just like. Bing, oh yeah, because <laughs> you can throw it and it explodes. I so got wait, this. If the blood heal, who, whose blood is is that then? Is this Chris's blood? Whose blood is what? The blood that explodes. Because I thought the 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 great one blood heals. Well, he's he's using his own blood to attack. Presumably, he can he can control, control that somehow. What it. Okay. Um, since he's a, an infant great one, he has like you know those kinds of abilities. He's wearing jail. boots. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> if I didn't know this was a Bloodborne video, I would have been like, "Oh, Julia's doing some some Sans, <laughs> some like some creepy redraws sans of, right? of Sans." Yeah, he's got the scarf. It's got a very wide stance. It's papyrus. Oh shit! Not Sans. Sans is the no. other one. Okay, James. Oh my God. <laughs> Bunch of fake Undertale fans in here. <laughs> hey, I played part of it. Yeah, I also didn't beat it. <laughs> I got to the part where the game told me that I that I restarted, and I was like, "This game knows too much. I can't. I can't with this. I can't have it knowing all the things I'm doing. I can't have it know all the things I'm doing. That's the contract you make with the game: is you can turn it off and on and start over, and the game doesn't judge you. But Undertale judges it you. It does judge you. Yeah, if you do that. I hate this boy. I'm looking him up. <laughs> Julia, this is a great drawing. <laughs> I'm looking him up. Oh, yeah, this is basically what I was thinking. In me noggin. Whoa! Yeah, that's his shrimp hammer. I like how you gave him like a noodle of placenta. Does he have a, <laughs> does he have a goatee? No, he doesn't have a goatee. That's his, his screaming mouth. Yeah, that's like a tongue that's sticking out. <laughs> yeah, let's get a, a different picture of him here. That's when um, he's like mournfully looking at the, the sky. Um, let's so, see. So, yeah, not really like clothes per se. Damn he sort it. of crawls out and. um. <laughs> I was going to be on you track. You were into not giving I him was. If I was allowed to have flesh, I wouldn't have given him a business attire. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been so close. But I love what you've done. You've given us a, a, a screaming business skeleton. Who and looks I like he's taking a poo. Wouldn't have it any other way. It is. This is. This has to be the position Julia draws all of her Bloodborne characters in. Just sort of a <laughs> yeah, big tall, squat. I had a to squish him in. Wide squat. A, a yeah. wide squat, sort of leaning forward, like. Mm. If they're tall, I mean, they're going to be squatting. No, no one told you to make them squat. <laughs> no one told, told you me. life was going to be this way, Julia. Ah. Uh, Listen, you did great. You all did great. This has been the Bloodborne episode. Now, now we can ascend. Now the nightmare has ended. The nightmare has been slain. We can all wake up and, and begin a new day. Is that how it Except ends? Except for Julia, maybe. <laughs> That's one of the endings. Oh. There's three endings. What? Wow. There's only one ending for this episode. And it's, and it's that we say we're sorry. It's that we but... say we're sorry. But first. But first. Subscribe yeah. if you don't already. And check out Dropout. We're going to keep saying it. Because it is until every person has done it on yeah, the world. Every yeah. person on the world. If you're on the world, <laughs> we have ascended to a subscription platform <laughs> where you can pay money and support us directly and get some premium ad free content like Cartoon Hell and the Ladies Book Club comic and uh, other stuff from College Humor like Fantasy High and I'm um, Actually. It's a lot of fun. I'm real excited. There's good shit on there. I'm real excited for, for people to check it out. I hope you do. Give it a shot. We're sorry. We're sorry. 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 Mom! <laughs> We're sorry! <laughs>